Right. And your name is what? Mike Johnson. No one's gonna forget that. So how did you end up speaker? No one knows. SNL mocking Republican Mike Johnson's chaotic path to the speakership. The little-known congressman being launched into the national spotlight without the normal vetting process. That vetting is actually now happening in real time, and it's not going well. CNN unearthing a series of interviews shedding light on his extreme views. Let's grow through it, starting with this. Last year, a month before Roe fell, Johnson compared abortion to a, quote, American Holocaust. Listen in his own words. It is truly an American Holocaust. I mean, the reality is that Planned Parenthood and all these big, you know, big abortion, uh, they set up their clinics in inner cities. Um, they, they are, you know, they, they regard these people as, as easy prey. Then there's Johnson's reaction after Roe fell. Recall Justice Clarence Thomas's argument in his concurring opinion that the legal reasoning overturning Roe could also be used to overturn cases establishing rights to contraception, same-sex consensual relations, and same-sex marriage. That's how the New York Times put it. It alarmed many Democrats and legal experts who said Clarence Thomas was laying the groundwork for more attacks on your individual rights, but it didn't alarm Mike Johnson. In fact, new audio reveals that he agreed. There's been some really bad law made. They've made a mess of our jurisprudence in this country for the last, you know, several decades. And, and maybe some of that needs to be cleaned up. And what, what Justice Thomas is calling for is not radical. In fact, it's the opposite of that. You know, we finally have a majority of originalists on the court. And that's not all, folks. Johnson also claimed that, quote, man is inherently evil and the, quote, radical left is godless. Take a listen. One of the primary purposes of the law and civil government is to restrain evil. We have to acknowledge collectively that man is inherently evil and needs to be restrained. That, see, that's the problem with the radical left. They don't acknowledge a God. I guess that's why he has accountability partners. The new audio builds on other revelations, including comparisons of environmentalists to the, quote, devil, and his lead role trying to overturn the 2020 election. Republicans failed to vet Johnson, but the hits keep coming, and at some point it may become impossible for the GOP to look away. Joining me now is Molly Jong Fast, special correspondent for Vanity Fair and the host of the Fast Politics podcast. Molly, so good to see you. Happy Thanksgiving. Look, let's start with the following. We just went through a litany of Mike Johnson's sound. Are you surprised at all by what is now being uncovered regarding his policy positions? No, I'm not surprised at all. And I have to say, these are all the things that Republicans should not want in a speaker because they're all the issues that they keep losing on, these social issues, right? Like in 22, we saw them lose on abortion. In this off-off year election that just happened, we saw them lose again on abortion in states like Kentucky. So it's interesting to me that they've made a man speaker who is, um, you know, he's against abortion. He's against gay marriage, right? He's sort of for book banning, don't say gay, all of those laws which Republicans have not done well with. This guy is emblematic of all of them. The problem, though, is Mike Johnson is the Speaker of the House, and he's endorsing things like Justice Clarence Thomas's position, which could lead to attacks on further attacks on individual rights. How chilling is that, given his current power and role as Speaker of the House? Well, it's interesting because you would think if you were smart as a Republican trying to win back the presidency in the Senate in 24, you would pretend that you didn't want to have a federal ban. I mean, you see these Republican candidates running around trying to not answer if they want a federal ban. But here's someone who undoubtedly wants a federal abortion ban. So I do think this is going to backfire for them. It was easy enough to just pick someone who was like Kevin McCarthy. And they just couldn't do it. And they just panicked and panicked and panicked. And three weeks went by. And they picked the person who was highest up in leadership who no one knew. And that guy turned out to be a real religious zealot. And I would add, he has to fundraise, right? He has to go to wealthy donors mm -hmm. and make the case that this Republican Party is not filled with religious extremists. How does that happen? Well, not well.
if it's going to be on his watch. <laughs> Molly, so the sound that we played a little bit ago, it went by really quickly, so I want to play it again. Here's what Johnson said about abortion access. Take a quick listen. It, it is truly an American holocaust. I mean, the reality is that Planned Parenthood and all these big, you know, big abortion, uh, they set up their clinics in inner cities. Um, they, they are, you know, they, they regard these people as, as easy prey. You know, Molly, I want to add here, too, because sometimes people can say, oh, this is tongue in cheek, kind of whatever stuff that's being said. Mike Johnson supports imprisonment for abortion doctors, the elimination of hate crime statutes. He thinks homosexuality is a behavior and shouldn't be covered by anti-discrimination laws. I mean, he's covering the waterfront when it comes to all things bad. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I also, it's it's making light of the Holocaust. You know, I'm Jewish. I had a lot of family die in the Holocaust and the pogroms before it. I mean, they were 8 million people, right? That was not the same as having, you know, a fertilized egg, right? These are not the same thing. And I think that it really does make light of, of what was one of the great tragedies for the Jewish people. So I would add that Republicans pretend to care about anti-Semitism. They should care about that analogy. But I would add that, yeah, I mean, the whole idea that people are being taken advantage of. Look, the reason why Roe was passed in 1973 was because doctors were afraid to treat women, right? They were afraid to treat women. They were losing their licenses. They were getting fines. They were our maternal mortality was way above what it should have been. Now here we are again having the same experience: doctors not wanting to treat, doctors leaving red states. We are a country that already has terrible maternal uh, mortality. It's only going up. I mean, this is a great example of where this these kind of religious zealots do not belong in our hospitals, in our operating rooms. We need to have real medicine that doesn't involve religion. And, you know, this country was founded on the premise that the church and the state were two different things.